good evening. God bless you and welcome to Dominion Air Women's First Bible Study of 20 and 22. We've had a fellowship um, and we've, we've kind of postponed some things due to, you know, the, the opening of the church and how we were doing things. But um, as we come back together and as we get into the heat of the summer, we do want to start our Dominion Air Women's Bible Study once again. So if you're here this evening, I just want to welcome you and thank you for joining in with us on tonight. We are starting a new study in Dominion Women, and that study is called called and Accountable. Um, the book is by Henry T. Blackaby and Norman C. Blackaby, Blackaby and it is available uh, both online where you can ebook, you can have the ebook downloaded, or you can order the book on CBD or uh, Christian book distributors. Uh, good evening, good evening. But definitely, um, this new study is called an accountable, and I just want to welcome you here tonight. We're going to start off with an introduction, um, and we're going to introduce the material. Uh, but I want to take our time going through this book. There's six units, and we've got six months left in the year. So we are going to take our time walking through this. You already know that I'm your, your sister, Alatash Johnson. Uh, Bishop is actually holding the men's at the same time. Uh, down in the man cave. So we've got two Bible studies going on at the same time. But our study starts off with called and accountable. So the website, I'm pl uh, I'm placing the website right here for you to see. It's www.christianbook.com or www.cbd.com. It's available for $10.99 on the CBD website, or you can get it uh, as an ebook for $6.89. You just download it right to your phone or to your device, whatever you use, the iPad, whatever works for you. Um, and the reason that we offer it this way and that we don't already have it, sometimes you got to make an investment. And when you make an investment, you're more likely to uh, invest your time and invest yourself in that as well. You know, the greatest investment is not what you necessarily put on you. And I heard this in another group. It's not what you put on your body. It's not what you put on your face. It's not even how you do your hair. The greatest investment that you can make is the investment that you make inside of you. And when you start to invest in you and start to grow, you'll realize that things around you will look different and you'll want the things around you to grow. So it is very important that you start making investments in yourself and investing time and in growing in the word of God and growing in the knowledge of him because it will change your life forever. Um, so the first thing we want to do is commit ourselves to prayer and to study this material. Um, as we open up tonight, can we just pray together? Is that all right? Let's pray for a moment. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we just thank you on this evening. We thank you for each and every Dominion woman who will tune in tonight, who will be able to catch us on the replay. Father, those who are just curious and want to know what they're talking about, God, I thank you for them. I thank you, Lord God, for leading them to this study. And Lord, we're praying right now that life change happens because of what we study in your word, that our mindset shifts because of what we hear from you. God, we invite your Holy Spirit, Father, to just reign, to rule, and to lead us through. Open the eyes of our understanding that they may be enlightened. Open our eyes, God. Father, open deaf ears tonight, Lord God, and let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, truly, we are grateful for you, and we thank you for your word. Thank you, oh God, for how you, God, even make it palatable for us to understand. We give you glory in it, in Jesus' name. Bless all those, oh God, who are watching tonight and are catching it on the replay, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's get started. I'm trying to see the comments so I can see uh, who's coming in, and it's a little, I'm going to have to open up my phone, actually, so I can interact, because I do want you to put some comments in there. Uh, so, oh, I know what it is. You have to actually agree to have your name on here for, for the comment to show up. I just figured that out. <laughs> we learn as we go, amen, we learn as we go. Good evening. Um, so each week as we open up this study, we're gonna have a Dominion Air verse of the week. We're gonna have a verse of the week that corresponds to the chapter in the verse. The reason why it's called, called and accountable is because what uh, Henry Blackaby is sharing with us is that he wants everyone to understand that a calling is not limited to a vocation, but God calls each and every one of us to himself. I do want to read the, the very first couple of paragraphs in the book because I think it's very powerful. Here's what it says. 
It says, it is overwhelming to realize that the God of the universe, the only God and creator of all that is, has chosen to call every believer into a special, very special relationship with himself. This call and the relationship that follows are very personal. The truth of this is found in almost every page of the Bible in life after life and verse after verse. It is central to the entire message of the Bible. It is in fact an expression of God's very heart. Even more amazing is the knowledge that it was God's choice to call people into such, into such a personal relationship with himself. He chose us in him, Christ, before the foundation of the world. That's one of my favorite scriptures. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy. That's unlike any other thing. That's what it means to be holy. It means to be set apart, set aside, and you're not like any other thing. And holiness is not limited to a spiritual um, aspect, but holy, um, whole in your mind, a wholeness, whole in your thoughts, whole in your body, whole in your health, whole in your um, whole in your finances, a wholeness to your life. He chose us to be holy and blameless in his sight. This comes out of Ephesians 1 and 4. Jesus expressed this plan of the Father to his disciples. And here is where we're going to get our verse of the week. Jesus expressed, you did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you that you should go out and produce fruit and that your fruit should remain. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So John 15 and 16 is where we get our verse of the week. It says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go out and produce fruit, that your fruit should remain. So whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. I want you to type, if you can, that I am God's choice. God chose you for such a time as this. The verse said he chose you and then he appointed you. When we look at the word appointed, it is a designated time. In building, it means he's equipped or furnished you in a specified way or, a, or to a specified standard. That standard is to be holy and blameless in him. That's what the standard is. But he says, I appointed you. I, I set a designated time to put you in the earth to equip you and furnish you so that you could be a standard of holiness and a standard of blameless, uh, have a blameless walk before me. Some of us say, well, I'm not qualified and I'm not this, you know, on our own standards, nobody's qualified. But when you think about God calling us out and choosing us to be holy and blameless, he is the one that qualifies. He is the one that appoints. And he appoints us at the time that he wants to appoint us. I need you to type in there, I am God's choice, because I truly want you to believe that. In Isaiah, 61 and 3, it says, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness. In our memory verse, it talked about producing fruit. Trees will produce either buds or leaves or flowers, but there are some fruit trees. And when you have a fruit tree, you want it to produce fruit. We're trees of righteousness. And what is the righteous fruit that we should be producing? If you know, go ahead and put it in the comments section. But it, the, 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 the fruit of the spirit is righteousness, peace, joy, uh, uh, love, joy, peace, um, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, faith, virtue, long-suffering, uh, uh, self-control. You know, there's no, uh, no limit on these. But these are the fruits of righteousness. So in one aspect, we can look at producing the fruit of righteousness or the fruit of the spirit. But there's another aspect that we can look at, and that's producing fruit, meaning that our testimony or our lives are producing something in, a, in others that's causing them to come to Christ, that we're producing other disciples. The Bible tells us to make disciples. But how can you make a disciple if you haven't first been called to Christ? How can you, now you can make a disciple of, of you know, you can make the hair disciples or you can make, you know, a particular occupational disciples. But when you make a disciple of Christ or someone who patterns their life after Christ, you can't do that unless you're first called to him. Because answering the call then allows you to hear his voice. 
answering the call means I am answering to something higher and greater than myself. After you answer that call, you realize that a special relationship is now enacted. A special relationship has been formed and you are walking into a newness of life. God doesn't just call us just to leave us. He doesn't go, hey, I want you to come here and then leave us alone. But he calls us and as he calls us, he wants to, us to move from glory to glory and from faith to faith. He wants us to grow in the knowledge of him and to grow in the understanding of him. Sometimes we get so hung up on figuring out what our purpose is that we miss that when he calls us and as we start walking with him, he reveals purpose to us. He starts to reveal those things that we are to do. Sometimes it's not just one thing. And sometimes it's not just one season, but we can transition from uh, as we go through life. In one season, we may be teaching. In another season, we may be ushering. In another season, we may be singing. You know, God can use us any way we make ourselves available and any way we lend our gift back to him because he has gifted us in ways that are different and unique. And he didn't call us to be copycats, but he called us to use what he's given us for the glory of the Lord. So as we are God's choice and as we are um, uh uh, trees of righteousness and we're producing fruit. I want to remind us again that he chose us first, that we would produce the fruit and the fruit would remain. How does the fruit remain? The fruit only remains if we stay connected to the call. The fruit only stays in play when we stay connected to him. For our fruit remain. You know, the scripture says only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do, remember only what you do for Christ will last. That's all. But only what you do for Christ will, will last. But when we produce fruit for the kingdom, we want that kingdom fruit to remain. When we even produce the love, the joy, the peace, um, the goodness, the meekness, and the faith, we want it to remain. We don't ever want to get to a point where we stop producing fruit of the spirit. Because if we stop producing fruit of the spirit, something is wrong with the root of our tree. Something is wrong with our connection. But Jesus reminds, I am the vine and ye are the branches. If you remain in me and my word remains in, in, in you, you can ask what you will and the Father will give it to you. So it is producing fruit as a result of being connected to the right root, connected to the vine, connected to God, connected to Christ. But when we talk about fruit remaining, that's where the accountability comes in. So our book is called Called and Accountable. We are called to Christ. We are called into a relation with, relationship with him. We are called uh, to uh, reciprocate a loving relationship with him. And as we are called to him and as we discover purpose, as we discover what it is he has called for us to do, as we discover that he's appointed us and placed us in certain situations, He's even placed us in certain circumstances. And you wonder, why am I here? How did I get here? And God is allowing us at this designated time to walk in what we're walking in so that others see our lives and they're able to eat from our tree. They are seeing our lives and they're walking like, how is she sustaining herself through this season where everybody else would have fallen or maybe we saw other people fall, but she's standing. She's going on. She's, she's moving up. God is still blessing her life. And they're eating that fruit. They're eating the love that you show where you, you could have been bitter about something, where you could have been angry um, and messed up. You are showing love and you are showing long suffering and you're giving grace to others. And they're receiving grace from you. And you're producing something in them. You're producing fruit in them. And you don't even realize it, but you're producing fruit that is remaining, fruit, fruit that is giving glory to God. Because you um, are allowing God to use you in such a way and in such a place. Sometimes we're in a hurry to move out of a place uh, that is uncomfortable. And God is using us while we're there. Uh, but he's appointing us. And God is allowing us to flourish in areas of difficulty. God is allowing us to flourish in areas of pressure. And every time that pressure comes, a new diamond is being formed. A new diamond is shining forth. And you've got others that are watching and they're living, uh, they're living their lives having benefited from yours. Amen. Sometimes it, 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 we, it's a little uncomfortable. I have to admit, sometimes it's uncomfortable when you're going through your processes and you're going through tests and trials 
and you're wondering, when am I coming out of this? And then you see others who are saying, I'm, I'm so grateful that you walk through the way that you walk through. I, I thank God for you. Don't be surprised if somebody approaches you tomorrow and says, I thank God for your life. I thank God that you did what you did. I thank God for the sacrifice that you made. I thank you for what you gave. Sometimes we have the, the children that are around us and youth that are coming up behind us and they come back years later and say, I really appreciate the fact that you taught me the word of God. I really appreciate the fact that you surrendered to Christ and you told me that I could not keep doing what I was doing if I wanted to live a blessed life. Don't ever discount uh, the lessons that you are teaching or the lessons even that you learn in your processes. God is using that. But he and he's using that to console of remember Isaiah 61 3 again. I gotta go back to that. To console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. You know, Dominion's vision, ladies, is that we equip you to empower others to encounter Jesus Christ. As we study this book and as we go through the units, we're gonna discover why it is God called us, what it means to be called, what it means to be empowered to God, by God, uh, and even what are the specifics of the call. And my prayer is that as we go through the study for these next uh, six months or so following this the unit schedule, as we go through, that there'll be a, a heightened sense of God's appointing of you and a heightened sense that where you are and where you're operating in ministry is where God wants you to be. And a heightened awareness that God is using your life to be a benefit to those around you, that you're not any place by accident, but that God is ordering your steps and that he is appointing you. He's given you designated places to be at designated times. And I don't want you to miss your appointment. I don't want you to miss what God is calling you to. I don't want you to miss the blessings that are coming your way because of the lives that you touch. So as we go through, it's Dominion's vision, yes, to empower you, to, to, uh, to equip you, to empower others to encounter Jesus. It's God's vision that he sees your heart loyal to him. So his vision is that his eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. As you discover and as you accept and realize that you are called by God, I truly believe that you're gonna have a greater appreciation for the calling of him, a calling of you to himself, that how he calls you to himself is how he is loving on you. And as you fall in love with Jesus over and over again, that you start to show forth his glory. He will reveal his glory through your life. He's gonna reveal his glory as you open up your mouth, as you smile, as you give, as you even surrender to some things. Sometimes the argument is not even worth winning. Just surrender and say, God, it's yours. Even the, 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 the situations, whether it's children or, or relationships or even finances, God, I'm surrendering this area to you because I want, your, I want your glory to be seen through it. We, at some point, we get tired of, of, of running in circles and cycles. And it comes to a point where we just have to surrender and say, God, I give this over to you. I give it over to you because I trust you. A loyal heart or a perfect heart is one that is mature. It's one that says, even though this doesn't feel good, even though this hurts, even though this looks crazy, God, you are working this out for my good. A loyal heart says, God does not, he, God promised in his word that he would never leave me or forsake me. God promised in his word that um, I could be crushed and uh, persecuted, downtrodden, but I will not be destroyed. I will not be separated from him. He says, no good gift will I withhold from you. A loyal heart remembers the word of God. A perfect or a mature heart depends on God coming through no matter what it looks like. And sometimes we're not always happy with the answer. We're like, well, this is not exactly what I expected or what I want. Hold on. 
God is going to come through and show you the why of what you're going through. God is going to reveal to you and it's going to bless your heart. And you're going to want to give that accounting to God. Lord, I held on to you. Lord, I, this fruit is produced and it's remaining. God, I kept, I held on to my love. I held on to my peace. I held on to the goodness. I held on to it. That fruit remained. And we are storing for ourselves up treasures in heaven. But that loving relationship with God will be reciprocated. And we'll have a greater appreciation that the one who called me is faithful to do everything he said he was going to do. You know, I was having a conversation earlier today. It was talking about how we value phone calls. You know, if uh, if you're on the phone with somebody and all of a sudden you see your mother call or your father call or someone important to you call, you say, hey, I've got to put you on hold because I've got to answer this call. But God is calling you tonight. And he wants to know, am I important enough? Do you value me enough to put your own agenda aside and answer my call? And remember, the first call is a call to get closer to him, is a call to be in that loving relationship with him. You didn't choose him, but he chose you. And he has called you to show forth his glory in the earth. Well, family, that's really all we have for tonight. We're starting this study. And remember, you can get this book on christianbook.com or cbd.com. Um, and I, I truly... Um, uh, I want you to invest uh, in this on uh, uh, as the weeks come on. The um, the electronic version is something that's handheld. You can get it very easily. Um, or the I'm not sure how long it takes, but you can get the book version as well. Um, but commit to prayer. Commit to praying and look for a verse of the week every week. I'm going to put the verse of the week out shortly after we end tonight. Uh, and we're uh, each week. We're going to go through these units. The first unit coming up is who are the called? You should already be able to answer that. I am the called. I am the chosen. Uh, but you are the called. And so the memory verse uh, for the week will be posted each week. And here throughout the next six weeks, we're going to be posting little things to go uh, along with the chapters. When we meet again, the next time we meet will be the second Tuesday in August. It's hard to believe how as this summer will go through. The next time we meet again, it'll be the second week in August. While every week there'll be some, excuse me, something about calls and accountable, look for uh, the next Bible study, which is in August. And by that time, um, I would like for you to get through unit one. And week by week, it goes by days in the book, but we're going to use the days as weeks. Um, and when we get to that second week in August, we should be right at the fifth week or the fifth unit in unit one or fifth chapter, fifth day in unit one. Um, and we're going to do a recap. And so all our, our Bible study will be a little bit longer and it may even be Zoom so we can talk to each other and interact. Um, I thought about doing a room. Uh, we'll just have to see how it works out. Zoom may be uh, what we need so that we can actually talk back and forth to each other. Because my desire is not that we just... Uh, get a book and we we rush through it i want our lives to be impacted i want the investment that we make in this book to be an investment that we make in our lives to truly understand the call of god for us so that we have the ability to teach others and to train others and to equip others so that they also encounter jesus christ i love you tonight thank you for being here um god bless you have a wonderful rest of the week uh know that you are loved, you are called, you are chosen, and you are God's choice. God is going to use you mightily. If ever there was a doubt, if ever there was a doubt that God called you for his purpose, know this, you are his choice. He was waiting on you. I love you, family. Have a wonderful night. God bless you. May his word be rich in you tonight. Amen.